folks thought I would do another deck tech quickly. Um, this one is my Aussie deck. Um, I made it as a bit of a joke um, to see how on theme I could make a deck. Um, I made it blue, green, and red um, because we've got oceans and forests and desert. Um, sand. I built it around this commander, Anima, the soul of elements, which is a blue, green, and red for a 1 1 legendary creature elemental protection from white and from black. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you may put a plus one plus one counter on Anima, and creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each plus one plus one counter on Anima. Um, he can go be pretty crazy in some decks, and you can build him to be very, very competitive. Um, I just have him so that the deck isn't terrible. <laughs> um, yeah. So, in terms of lands, we have five, six, seven, eight, nine forests, and one, two basic islands. Um, and then, in terms of non-basic lands, we've got a a bunch here. Um, so we have a bunch of deserts because they're flavorful. So we have Hostile Desert, which taps for a colorless mana, or you can pay to and exile a land from your graveyard, and Hostile Desert becomes a 3 4 elemental creature until the end of turn, it's still a land. Um, I've basically included every desert in these colors, or that has no colors, I'm pretty sure, um, or that was available at the time, though I don't think they've done deserts since Amon Ket. Maybe they'll do it again, who knows. Um, Temple of Mystery. Temples, they're good. This one taps for green or blue, and when it enters the battlefield, you scry one. Same for all of the other temples. I've got all the temples in the colors. Um, Scavenger Grounds, another desert. So it taps for colorless, but you can also pay to tap and sacrifice a desert, any desert, to exile all cards from all graveyards. Just a really useful utility ability as well. Um, I've got the gates as well. This is the Gruel Guild Gate, so it taps for red or green, enter the battlefield tapped. Simic Guildgate, similar thing, taps for green or blue, enter the battlefield tapped. Simic Growth Chamber, the green blue bounce land. Uh, Sun Scorch Desert, when it enters the battlefield, deals one damage to target player and it just taps for a colorless. Sulfur Falls, um, enter the battlefield tapped unless I control an island or a mountain and it taps for blue or red. Desert of the Fervent, enter the battlefield tapped, taps for red. And I can also cycle it for one and a red, which can be handy in the later game. Um, temple of Abandon, Abandon the red-green temple. Um, so scry one and one and ETBs into spellfield tapped. And the blue-red temple as well. Um, Rootbound Crag into the battlefield tapped on this. You control a mountain or a forest and taps for a red or a green. Hinterland Harbor, same thing for, but for green or blue. Uh, Grasping Dunes is another desert. It taps for a colorless, and you can pay one, tap, and sacrifice it to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature, but only at sorcery speed. Um, can be decent. Um, helps you to get rid of X1s or just make things slightly smaller and more manageable. Um, desert of the Mindfall, this is the, the blue cycling desert. Um, Opal Palace, um, so it taps for a colorless, or you can pay one, tap, and add to your mana pool one mana of any color in your commander's color identity, so blue, red, green, or red. If you spend this mana to cast your commander, it enters the battlefield with a number of additional plus one plus one counters on it, equal to the number of times it has been cast from the command zone this game, um, which is really handy for Anima, because he doesn't care how he got the plus one plus one counters, as long as he has the plus one plus one counters, you still get the benefit from it, which is really nice. Um, command Tower, just good in any commander deck. Frontier Bivouac, the tri land in these colors. Ramen Up Ruins, Ruin Standard. Um, tap to add colors, pay one life to add, tap and pay one life to add red, or two red, red, tap and sacrifice a desert, and it deals two damage to each opponent, which is nice. Um, not just to one opponent, to each opponent. Um, the blue one, um, so taps for colorless, tap pay one life, add blue. Uh, one and a blue, tap sacrifice a desert target player, mills four. Um, this deck doesn't have that much graveyard shenanigans, so 
um, but it's probably more value to mill yourself than to mill someone else. Um, the green one taps to add a colorless. Pay tap pay one life to add green. One green green tap sacrifice a desert target creature gets plus three plus three until end of turn. Only at sorcery speed can be useful. Um, sometimes you can win through commander damage with this deck because animal can get quite big and difficult to remove because of protection from black and white. And we have OG Desert, which taps to add a colorless or taps to deal one damage to target attacking creature, but you can only do it during the end of combat step. So after damage has already been assigned. Um, and the red-green bounce land as well. So that was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 non-basic lands and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 basic lands. So that's 34 lands. Um, that's probably a little bit lower than what I'd run for most decks, um, but this deck um, has a lot of help from Animar um, as in terms of getting stuff out, and there's a lot of a lot of the time when you'll have mana spare. Um, let's go through the non-creatures first. Obviously, there's not too many, but there's still still a few here. Um, so first up, we have Fiery Gambit. This is just a bit of a fun one. We have a lot of flavor cards in here. So Fiery Gambit, two and a red for a sorcery. Flip a coin until you lose a flip or choose to stop flipping. If you lose a flip, it has no effect. If you win one or more flips, it deals three damage to target creature. If you win two or more flips, it deals six damage to each opponent. If you win three or more flips, you draw, how many is that? Nine cards and untap all lands you control. Most of the time, it's probably not going to do anything, but <laughs> it's fun. Um, and gambling is certainly a bit of an Australian thing. Um, Chromatic Lantern, it's just Dece in three plus color decks, so it's nice to have here. All my lands tap for any color, and it taps for one mana of any color myself. Prosperity. Also a bit of an Aussie thing with the gold rush and all that sort of thing. So X and a blue, each player draws X cards. Seems good. And one of the things that I was finding early on with my build of this deck is I was running out of cards quite quickly because once you do get Anamara a bit, it's easy to dump out your hand and then you've got nothing left and you're just top decking. Um, next up, Crush of Tentacles. So this one's in here because you get an Octopus. So it's four blue blue for a sorcery. Return all non-land permanents to their opponents, to their owner's hands. Um, so that's a symmetrical effect. So all all non-land permanents, everyone controls, including your own. But it also has a surge cost for three blue blue. So surge is you may cast this spell for its surge cost if you or a teammate. That doesn't really matter if you have cast another spell this turn. So if you've cast any other spell this turn like, say, a creature with reduced CMC, so you've been able to do it for one mana, then you can cast this for five instead of six, and if you do, you also get a free 8-8 eight, eight octopus creature token. Seems dece, right? <laughs> instead of six mana white bounce everything, it's five mana bounce everything, and you get an 8-8 eight, eight at the end. Just, just casually. Um, next up, Mysteries of the Deep. Four and a blue for an instant, draw two cards, but also landfall on an instant. If you had land enter the battlefield under your control this turn, you draw three cards instead. Five mana, draw three cards. Not too bad to snip at. Um, and again, Mysteries of the Deep seemed like it worked well for Australia. This one also works very well for Australian Wildfire. We certainly get those here. Four red, red sorcery. Each player sacrifices four lands. Then Wildfire deals four damage to each creature. Um, and again, this isn't going to be something that hurts me as much as it hurts other people. Um, and if Animar is big enough, this also won't kill Animar. Um, so, yeah, it, it can work pretty well. Um, Arachnogenesis, I love this card so much. Again, Spiders, Australian. Two in a green for an instant. Put X, one, two, green spider creature tokens with reach onto the battlefield, where X is the number of creatures attacking you. 
prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn by non-spider creatures. So it's a one-sided fog and you get a bunch of blockers. Um, so you might be able to kill some of their creatures too, maybe, if not. Hey, you've got a bunch of creature tokens that can hang around for next time. Um, so that card can be very handy. Um, spider Silk Armor. Again, more spiders. This one's an enchantment. Two and a green. Um, creatures you control get plus zero, plus one, and may block as though they had flying. I do need to check the oracle text on that to see if it's they get reach or it's they may block as though they had flying because they're there are instances in which there is a difference between the two, but um, yeah, it can be decent. It helps you be able to deal with flyers, which is nice. Um, and yeah, flavor. Um, next, we have Shared Discovery. One blue for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast it, tap four untapped creatures you control. Draw three cards. One mana, draw three cards. Seems seems pretty good. I mean, you're tapping four creatures, but in this deck, you often have a lot of creatures kind of hanging around that you can't attack with because they're not very good. Um, but yeah, so being able to draw those cards seems pretty great. Next up is the Great Aurora. Six green, green, green. This is some crazy jank. I've never been able to get this off. Um, it's a sorcery. Um, for those who don't know... Like, you're probably aware of the Aurora Borealis, but there's also an Aurora Australis. Um, I've never seen it myself, but it is a thing. So this this is, is a flavor include. Um, so each player shuffles all cards from their hand and all permanents they own, all permanents, not non-land permanents, all permanents, into their library. Then they draw that many cards. So the number of cards in your hand plus the number of permanents that you have on the battlefield, you draw that many cards. Each player may put any number of land cards from their hand onto the battlefield. Exile the Great Aurora. This is a reset the game button, basically. Um, if the board is just getting too insane, you use that and you hope that you can rebuild a little bit faster than everyone else can. Um, yeah, sometimes you will be able to, sometimes you won't, but it's a bit of a jank card. It's annoying for people. People will get salty at you for playing it, most likely, but, um, yeah, sometimes that's what you need to do, I guess. Um, next up we have Hidden Spider, one green for an enchantment. When one of your opponents successfully casts a creature with flying, love how old text words these things if hidden spider is an enchantment it becomes a 3-5 creature that can block creatures with flying and that counts as a spider so basically if anyone else casts a flyer this becomes a 3-5 with reach pretty simple next up we have polymorphist's jest one blue blue for an instant until end of turn each creature target player controls loses all abilities and becomes a blue frog with a base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. This is really nice um, for both when you're attacking into someone, when they're attacking into you. It works either way, or if you just need to shut off some abilities. Um, yeah, it works really, really, really nicely. Um, it, it, yeah, answers a lot of things. Um, and also, they're all frogs, which are again an Australian thing. It's remarkable how many decent cards I was able to find that still worked on flavor. This is not so much of a flavor thing, it's just a teamer thing. Team of Battle Rage. One and a red for an instant. Um, target creature gains double strike until end of turn. Ferocious, that creature also gains trample until end of turn if you control a creature with power for or greater most of the time that is going to happen. Um, yeah, this card can win games, um, particularly with if Anima is decently large. It, yeah, it, it, it can win games out of nowhere. Soul Ring. It's Soul Ring. It's in the deck. Eaten by Spiders. More flavor. 
two and a green for an instant, destroy target creature with flying and all equipment attached to that creature. The second half of that most of the time is flavor, but destroy target creature with flying. Yep. Yeah. It's not a great card, but again, flavor. Um, Commander Spear. Just a good card. Some extra mana. Sack later to draw a card. Seems decent. Ah, yes. Subterranean Tremors. So X and a red for a sorcery. It deals X damage to each creature without flying. Um, so it won't help you with flyers. But if X is four or more, you also destroy all artifacts. If X is eight or more, you also put an 8-8 eight, eight red lizard creature token onto the battlefield. Lizards! Um, so again, a bit of an Aussie thing. Yeah, it can be as, essentially a pseudo board wipe. Um, yeah, get rid of artifacts as well, which can be really handy. Um, might get rid of a couple of your own. Um, there's not too many in this deck, but mostly will hurt other people more than it hurts you. Um, and yeah, get a big 8-8 Lizard at the end too. Um, next up we have Coastal Discovery. Again, Aussie thing. Uh, three and a blue for a sorcery, draw two cards. Or, um, you can instead cast it for five and a blue, the alternate cost, to awaken four. Um, so if you cast this spot for five and a blue, you also put four plus one plus one counters on target land you control, and it becomes a zero zero elemental creature with haste, which is still a land. So, this card is either 4 mana draw 2, which is okay, or it's 6 mana make one of your lands a 4-4 four, four, and also draw 2, which is pretty great. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad at all. It does work when it needs to. Um, next up is just plain old Team or Ascendancy. Green, blue, red for an enchantment creatures you control have haste. It does very nicely. And whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. It's just a powerhouse of, of a card. It really helps the deck to work. Um, <laughs> this is both a flavor thing but also a late game thing. So aggressive mining. You certainly have that in Australia. Three in a red for an enchantment. You can't play lands. I don't think I have any way to get rid of this enchantment if things go wrong. You can't play lands. Sacrifice a land. Draw two cards. Activate this ability only once each turn. So you can activate it on other people's turns. So basically late game, if you've got heaps of lands and not much to play you can pop this out and start sacrificing some of those lands to draw extra cards it means that you won't be able to ever play another land unless you have someone else destroy it because they think you're getting too much um card advantage um but yeah i don't think there's a way to, to get rid of the enchantment in the deck but flavor last one flood one blue for an enchantment Pay two blue to tap target creature without flying. Um, yeah, if you've got enough blue mana, that can, you know, stop people from attacking you, basically, or tap down blockers. It can be really nice. Um, so those are all the non-creature cards in the deck. Non-creature. So we've done all the yeah. Yeah, we've done all the lands, we've done all the non-creatures. Now we have the creatures I am shuffling up, because it's always fun to do it a bit random. Let's see what we get off the top. Man of War. Two and a blue for a jellyfish. Um, when Man of War comes into play, return target creature to its owner's hand. It's a 2-2. Two -two. It's a good card. What can I say? It's a good card, and it's also a jellyfish, which is on flavor. So... 2-2, two, two, bounce a thing. It works. Next up, we have Blight Widow. 3 and a green for a 2-4 spider with reach and infect. There are 3, maybe 4 cards in the deck that have infect. You're probably not killing someone with infect, but there are a few cards that have it in there. Not so much because I'm like, I like infect, but 
just the ones that I got happen to have it. Um, and here's another one of the ones that do. Blight Mumba, one in a green for a 1-1 one, one snake with infect, and you can also pay one in a green to regenerate Blight Mumba. Um, if you can't remember what regenerate does, basically it puts a shield around the creature, and the next time that that creature would die this turn, instead it doesn't die and you tap it, I believe is how it works. Um, but yeah, it can live pretty long. Um, next up is Needle Peak Spider, so we're getting a lot of spiders. Three and a red for a 4-2 spider can block as though it, have, so it has reach. Three and a red for a 4-2 with reach. So a lot of these cards aren't that good, but they're fine. Sedge Scorpion, one green, one green for a 1-1 one, one scorpion with death touch. That's it. It it does what it says in the box. Yep. Um, hammerhead shark. I can't remember if we have specifically hammerheads, but we do have sharks. One in a blue for a two three shark. Um, hammerhead shark can, cannot attack unless defending player controls any islands. That's worded poorly, but basically you they need to have an island for it to attack. Um, so again. Not very good. A 2 mana 2-3 two, with downside. <laughs> Welcome to Old Water Magic. Next up, what do we have? Ah, Broodbirth Viper. 4 and a blue for a 3-3 three, three snake with Myriad. So that means when this attacks for each other player that this is not attacking, you may create a token copy of this attacking um, each of those other players. Um, and whenever it deals combat damage to play, you may draw a card. So, and you can also do that off the token copies, because they'll be exact copies of this card. Um, yeah. Um, but the tokens are exiled at the end of combat. They don't stay around. Um, yeah. It's decent. It's a snake. We have snakes. Next up, speaking of snakes, fire snake. Four and a red for a 3-1 snake. Um... When it dies, destroy any one land. Which can actually be a really useful ability, like selective land destruction, uh, you know, for any of the Gaia's cradles out there, or um, to Urbog, Yorgmoth, um, Cabal, Script, and stuff. All of those ones. Um, Thespian Stage, Dark Depths, Dark Depths isn't the land. Yeah, for crazy lands it can be useful. Um, and what you'll note is a lot, a lot of these cards only have the one coloured pip. Um, it makes it a lot easier with Animar to get them out if they only have the one coloured pip because Animar reduces the generic mana cost but not the coloured mana cost. Here we have Skullwinder, two in a green for a 1-3 snake with Death Touch. When I enter the battlefield, you return target card from your graveyard to your hand, then choose an opponent. That player returns a card from their graveyard to their hand. So this is a political card. I enjoy having a few political cards in the deck. It's always nice to be able to have someone that you're like, Ah, oh, I'll do this for you if you do this for me. Um, yeah, it's nice being able to have a few cards like that and just... Be nice to people now and then. Um, sea Lock Monster, Giant Octopus. Three blue blue for a 5-5 five, five Octopus. It is large. It can't attack unless defending player controls an island. But if you pay five blue blue, I believe it is, yeah, five blue blue, it, um, it becomes monstrous. You put three plus one plus one plus one counters on it. And when it does, target land becomes an island in addition to its other types. So if there was someone that you weren't able to attack because they weren't in blue, you can make one of their lands an island, and now you can attack them, and this is now an 8-8 attacking them. Um, it's just an 8-8. It doesn't have any evasion or anything. It's not that good. Um, and you have to sink 13 mana into it <laughs> for that to happen. But we're working in theme here, folks. Next up, Sky Snare Spider, four green, green, four a six six with vigilance and reach. That's it. 
It's large. It blocks well. It attacks decently. Yep. Next up, Death Hood Cobra. One and a green for a 2 2 snake. And has two different activated abilities, both for one and a green. You can give it either Reach or Death Touch until end of turn. Or you can give it both. Yeah, does what you need it to. Um, and then we have Crocodile of the Crossing. Again, lots of crocodiles in Australia. Three and a green for a 5 4 crocodile. It has haste. But when it ends the battlefield, you need to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature you control. So not on one someone else controls, one that you control. Um, I do have one other synergy with that in the deck. There's one other crocodile in here that cares about a minus one, minus one counter being on your own creatures. But most of the time, it's not, probably not going to show up. So it is a little bit annoying, but you get a 5-4 with haste. Or a 4-3 with haste if you put it on itself. Next up, Scale Behemoth. Four green green for a 6-7 with Hexproof. It's pretty decent. Um, hexproof is annoying for people to deal with. Um, even these days in Commander. Um, so a lot of the time, it's going to be hanging out for a little while, at least. Um, <laughs> I love this card quite a bit. Um, two and a blue for a 1-3 Defender with Flying. It's a Jellyfish. Flavor. Um, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to guard Gomazoa. So it's not quite indestructible. Um, it's a little bit different in that it's actually preventing the combat damage. So I'm not sure how it works with Trample. I think Trample still gets past this. So if someone has a big enough creature that has Trample and you block this with it, um, the extra damage will still Trample over, but this won't die. Um, but it means it doesn't die to death touch, doesn't die to first strike death touch, or infect, or anything like that. It just blocks really, really well. That's yeah, nice. Next up, Bloated Toad. Yeah, we've got a lot of toads. Two and a green for a 2 2 with protection from blue. And cycling for two. Yeah. It's fine. It's not that great, but it's okay. Um, the only wombat in magic, not in silver border, in black border, well, technically in white border, two green green for a zero one wombat. That is right, folks, a four mana zero one, but it has vigilance. It's amazing. A zero one vigilance for four mana, and it gets plus two, plus two for each enchantment on it. There are <clears throat> zero <clears throat> enchantments in this deck, so that is a four mana zero one with vigilance. <laughs> Flavor! Flavor! <sighs> Next, God Hunter Octopus. Five and a blue for a five five octopus. It can't attack unless defending player controls an enchantment or an enchanted permanent. A six mana five five with downside is pretty bad. Um, but in this deck, sometimes it can be a one mana five five with downside. <laughs> um, most of the time, though, people will you'll have someone with an enchantment. Next up, we have Emperor Crocodile three in a green for a five five crocodile. When you control no other creatures, you have to sacrifice it. Um, most of the time, that won't happen. But yeah, ah, here we go. Here's another one with poison. Sabertooth Cobra, 2 and a green for a 2-2. If it damages a player, they get a poison counter. During that player's next upkeep, they get another poison counter, unless they pay 2 before then to prevent this effect. If a player has 10 or more poison counters, they lose the game. So it's basically in effect before there was infect, but not really as poisonous. Um... I think was the name of the mechanic at the time. So it's kind of poisonous, but a little bit different. There's, it gets one immediately and then one's delayed. It's very interesting. Um, yeah, that can get in sometimes. Um, Ambush Viper is very handy. A 2-1 with flash and death touch for one and a green. And it's a snake. A lot of snakes in the deck. Ah, uh, yes. Lorthos, the Tide Maker. Five, blue, blue, 
blue for a legendary creature octopus. It is an 8-8. Eight, eight. Whenever it attacks, you may pay 8. It's a lot of mana. If you do, you may tap up to 8 target permanents. Those permanents do not untap during their controller's next untap steps. Um, yeah. If you can get it out, and if you can pay the 8 mana, and if you can attack with it, it does work. I've never been able to do that. But, <laughs> in Magical Fairyland, um, Toxic Iguana, it's a 1-1 one, one lizard for 1 red, and it has Death Touch, as long as you control a green permanent. It's fine. It's a lizard. It's on flavor. Ah, uh, yes. This is one of the ones that is slightly less flavorful and more just good. Three and a green for a 4-5. They're totally rabbit deer. They're, yes, they're rabbit deer. We have rabbits. It's flavorful. Um, if you play any spell, return Jackalope Herd to its owner's hand. So the way this works is you need to have Anamara up at a few counters already. You play this for one green. You play anything else. You bounce this back. Um, you play it again for one green. You play anything else. You bounce this back. You play this again for one green. You play anything else. You bounce this back. It's a very quick way, um, if you've got enough mana, to basically continue getting plus one, plus one counters on Anima for probably only one or two mana each time, which is really nice. Um, and yet to not run out of cards while doing it. Um, or not run out of cards as quickly, anyway. Next up, Thieving Magpie. Two blue blue. We have magpies. This is the only magpie in the game. One and a three for a bird with flying. Whenever it deals damage to one of your opponents, you draw a card. It's fine. It's a magpie, okay. Gomazoa. Ah, oh, this is so good. I love this card. Two and a blue for an O3 jellyfish. It has defender. It has flying. And it has tap. Put Gomazoa and each creature it is blocking on top of their owner's libraries. Then those players shuffle their libraries. Whatever this blocks is going away. <laughs> it is going away. And you are not seeing it anymore. So it is an answer to a creature once. But people know you have it. It's on the board, right? So... Ah, yes. This thing. <laughs> Voracious Cobra. Two, a red and a green for a 2-2 with first strike and death touch before it was keyworded. Uh, w w when these two are together, it's a little bit insane. Um, because unless something else that this is blocking also has first strike, it will always die unless it has indestructible. Um... Yeah, so that's a thing. Um, yeah, it's pretty decent. Next up, glowing anemone. Anemone, anemone, anemone. Apparently, that counted as a beast. Somehow. Um, three in a blue for a one three. When it comes into play, you may return target land to its owner's hand. Bounce a land. Sure, let's bounce a land. Hissing Iguana, 2 and a red for a 3-1 lizard whenever another creature is put into a graveyard from play, so whenever another creature dies most of the time, you may have it. this deal 1 damage to target player. Um, yeah, it can start pinging people, which is nice. Um, yeah, that works okay. Giant Shark, 5 and a blue for a 4-4. Uh, this text is quite small. If Giant Shark blocks or is blocked by a creature that has taken damage this turn, I don't know how it would have taken damage, but sure. Giant Shark gains plus 2, plus 0, oh, and trample until end of turn. Giant Shark cannot attack unless opponent controls at least one island. Giant Shark dies immediately if at any time its controller controls no islands. Yeah. Algae Garial, 3 and a green for a 1-1. One, one. Crocodile. 
with the shroud. Whenever another creature dies, you can put a plus one plus one counter on it though. Um, yeah, it's fine. Um, and it's any creature dying, not just your own creatures. So it can get decently large, and shroud means it's difficult for other people to deal with. Um, lurking Crocodile, 2 and a green for a 2-2 two, two with Bloodthirst 1. So if an opponent was dealt damage this turn, it enters with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it, um, which is nice. So it enters as a 3-3 three, three for 3, and also has Island Walk. So if someone has an island, they can't block it, which is nice. Next up, this isn't so good in terms of colour pips, it has a lot of them. 2, Red Red, Green Green. For a 5-6 spider with reach. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, any spell, any spell, um, you get a 1-1 green insect creature token. It's decent. Keep pumping out tokens every time they cast a spell. It can be a lot of tokens. Next up, 3 and a blue for a giant octopus. It is an octopus. It is a 3-3. It has flavor text. Clinging anemones. Clinging anemones. Three in a blue for a one four with defender and evolve. And apparently anemones are jellyfish at this point. Um, yeah. Flavor win. We have anemones. Cold water snapper. Five in a blue for a four five with hexproof. It is a turtle. Turtle. It's fun. Ah, here was the other minus one, minus one counter one. Two, green, green for a four, four crocodile. As long as a creature has a minus one, minus one counter on it, this has vigilance and death touch. Otherwise, it is a four, 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 four. But if something has a minus one, minus one counter on it, it's a four, 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 four with vigilance and death touch. Which is so much better. Uh, Marsh Viper. That is a three and a green for a one, two. Viper. If it damages any player, they get two poison counters. If any player has two or more poison counters, they lose the game. Another thing with poisonous. Um, quarry hauler. Three and a green for a four, three camel. Because we have camels. When it enters the battlefield, for each kind of counter on target permanent, unfortunately you can't target a player, um, put another counter of that kind on it, or remove one from it. So you can put another counter on Anima. Um, yeah, that's mainly what you're using it for, really. Um, root Water Alligator, three in a green for a three two, and you can sacrifice the forest to regenerate it. I have used that ability before, um, a few times. <laughs> it's handy. Um, next up, Species Gorger, three a green and a blue for a six six Frog Beast. At the beginning of your upkeep, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. Which is really nice, because it means that you ha always have at least one thing that you're going to be able to play. Um, yeah. Which is good for Anima. Next up, Saber Ants. 3 in a green for a 2-3 insect. Whenever it's dealt damage, you may put that many 1-1 one, one green insect creature tokens into play. It's fine. It's okay. Fire Ants! The fire ants! The fire ants. Um, two and a red for a 2 1 insect. You can tap it to deal one damage to each other creature without flying. This is such a good ability. Such a good ability. Um, there are so many places where it comes in so handy. Um, it not having haste is annoying. Um, so if you have a team or ascendancy out, it's amazing for that ability, but it's really. Um, also, fire ants. And lastly, Thorned Moloch. It's a 2 and a red for a 2-2 two, two lizard with prowess, and it has first strike as long as it is attacking. I don't know why a lizard has prowess, but apparently it does. Anyway, that is it for this deck tech video about my Aussie creature deck led by Anima. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed this fun little look at this deck. This deck was very, very cheap to build. I think it was under $50. Um, yeah, because most of these cards people don't use. Um, for good reason. 
um, but I had a lot of fun building it. I have a lot of fun playing it. It plays remarkably well for an Aussie creatures deck. Um, I mean, it has Animar at the helm, so that's mainly why. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of fun with it. Um, let me know if you build it as well, I guess, or if you'd like to build it. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed watching that, and I'll see you next time.